Hello, welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John and today we're going to look at bending a barrel on this uh, Daisy 1000. Uh, it's been bent up and uh, you know I don't I try not to be a home for broken air guns but uh, they seem to come to me. This one from my neighbor and uh, he brought it in. This belongs to a friend of his and um, what happened is the guy says, well, I, you know, I hadn't shot it for a while and I took it out and, uh, and shot and it kept shooting really high and he used to have a scope on here and he said he couldn't adjust the scope to, to get the point of impact and point of aim consistent. And when you look at the barrel, you can kind of see it does have a, an upward bend to it. So let's talk for a minute about how these barrels get bent in the first place. Usually cocking the gun is not something that will bend the barrel. You have to do something uh, more. Um, you know, Randy Bimrose, a good friend of mine, and he was the uh, uh, chief gunsmith there at Beeman's for a couple of decades. And he said they would get these in all the time, these brake barrel uh, air rifles, and the, the uh, barrel would be bent up. How it happens is somebody will be cocking the gun and they'll bring the, the barrel down to cock it and then it'll slip out and snap back up and that'll bend the barrel. Or they'll cock it and while the barrel is open they'll trigger it off and the barrel will snap back up and that, uh, that also will bend it. And in most cases uh, if that happens uh, and it has a wood stock, you know this is synthetic, but if it were a wood stock it would be broken right about in here with the, uh, the grip on it. And he said that over his decades at Beeman's, they would get these in and nobody would ever uh, fess up that they had um, it triggered the gun off when it was uh, in the, you know, during the caulking process or, or let go of the caulking or the barrel so that it snapped back up. Um, it was always, uh, they don't know how it happened. They, they let their cousin borrow it or their brother or it was uh, leaning up against the wall and they took it out to shoot it and it was bent. And then he said one time there was a guy came to the shop, the Beeman uh, shop, uh, I guess in Huntington Beach or uh, wherever it was. Um, and the guy walked in the door and said, you know, I've, uh, I messed up. I was cocking the gun and I triggered it off and the barrel snapped back up and now I've got a bent barrel, I can't hit anything and I got a big crack in my stock right here. They were so amazed to have somebody actually um, admit that they messed up and done that to their gun that they went ahead and while the guy waited they went ahead and, and bent the barrel back and they had a whole bunch of uh, wood stocks uh, sitting up on a shelf and they were there when you know somebody would upgrade to, uh, to a better stock. Well they put the used one up there so they gave him a new stock and bent his barrel back while he's waiting and didn't even charge him. They were so impressed that uh, somebody had, had admitted to doing that deed. Uh, on Pyramid Air in the Tom Gaylord's uh, blog, he's got a five-part series. I think it's five parts and I'll put a link to it down here in the, the uh, comments um, that talks about making a fixture to bend these. So with that we're going to pull off the stock and, and take a look at this thing. So when we, we talk about the bar barrel being bent um, most of the time it's it's not in this part of the barrel. I mean it's not like you know the barrel is is bowed or something like that. I mean it's possible but uh, most of the time we're talking about being bent as it comes out of the breech block here somewhere in this area so that this is actually you know relatively straight uh, coming out but it's this here oops, where we have the, uh, the problem and you can see I think if we, if we use the top of the breech block as a reference that um, it right about in this location um, it's bent up so extending a line straight out from the breech block gets you to right about here so the, anyway, the point is that the barrel's pointing up from this area rather than all along its entire length. But I pulled a an R not or R7 rather, and uh, 
You can kind of see, I think, if we shine a light here behind it. And using the uh, breech block as a kind of a reference, you can see that there's light behind it that's relatively even the entire length of the barrel. On our barrel, on the other hand, oops, if again we use the uh, the breech block as the uh, kind of the reference, we start down here we've got a pretty big gap and as we move up this way it gets smaller and disappears roughly about halfway up. So that's what we want to do is have it fairly even or just slightly um, bent up over the entire length rather than only getting you know this far with it. So how are we going to do the uh, bending? Let's take a look at that. Well here's our <coughs> barrel bending fixture. Um, the dimensions on this are you know, this is uh, 22 inches here for the 2x4 or 2x3 whatever that is. Uh, 24 inches for the plywood. And these dimensions are based on uh, what kind of scraps I had laying around in the shop here. And, uh, and so what I did is I just, you know, a couple of screws here, turned it over and drove some screws in the back here to kind of stiffen it up. And, um, you know, you could actually just use a 4x4 four four if you wanted to. Um, but this way I like having the backing uh, because it keeps the, you know, it kind of gives you something to rest the barrel against here. Uh, so it's not just sitting out in, in the middle of a piece of wood. To bend it lower, you need to have this end higher than this end. And then we'll put pressure here, we'll use a clamp uh, to bend it. Okay, well this is uh, the fixture we're using. We've got the barrel set up here. If you recall, we came out and it was touching right about here when we put a straight edge on the uh, breech block. So what we want to do is get it so it doesn't touch until you know, it gets out here somewhere toward the end. This clamp is just here to hold the barrel in place so it doesn't fall off uh, and drop on the floor. That would be bad. I've got a piece of Delrin spacer here on the uh, end of the barrel and another Delrin spacer right, uh, let's see, right, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, under the breech block here, right there. And then this is a uh, piece of Delrin that I just made up to protect the barrel while we're doing the bending. Um, and what we have to bend it with is a C-clamp here. And this one has uh, flats on the, on the uh, end of the screw so we can actually put a, uh, a wrench on it and clamp it down a little more than we might by hand. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and put that there. And okay, now we'll start tightening it up and see if we can't get this barrel to bend back to where we want it. This uh, fixture, by the way, is the same one that Tom Gaylord had in his um, blog. And you can almost see a little bit of a bend. We want to go too far. Uh, in other words, you want to bend it a little further than you need and then it'll spring back slightly. So let's keep going here. Well, I had to get my longer straight edge here, which I've done. And if we put that on there, um, let me shine the light behind it. Oops. The, uh, the gap is pretty uniform all the way from the breech block out toward the end here. And it finally disappears uh, 
right out here, you know, roughly in this vicinity, which is kind of where we wanted it. So I'm going to call this good uh, as far as the initial bending. What we'll have to do now is take it out to the uh, range and shoot it and see if we can hit anything. And then we can bring it back and make some adjustments if we need to. Uh, it's interesting if you look at that Tom Gaylord uh, Pyramid Air blog that he actually uh, puts the scope on the gun and, and shoots it, sees where the point of impact is out here, and then, um, and then bends the barrel to make that point of impact uh, the same as the point of aim at a certain distance. So it's kind of an interesting way of going about this. Um, I just wanted to get this on paper, so uh, we'll have to see if we've done that. 